Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the know with Juanita. We're glad that you're watching us again this week. We're always happy for people like you, people that are interested in the issues that are happening in our cities. If you haven't watched us before, each week we'll have somebody on from one of the nine cities in CCX's viewing area to update us on what's happening in that city and what's going to come about in the months ahead. And we encourage you, if it's your city particularly, take down the names and the phone numbers and the emails. So if you have questions or concerns, you can be in contact with them. From time to time, we'll bring programs to you that show things about our cities. And that's what we're going to do tonight. So we're very happy tonight to welcome Adrian Moy and Joni Claussen. They're Thank from you. the Golden Valley Pride Festival Committee. Or Correct. I think the committee, right? Yes, it okay. is a committee. And so we're very glad to have them with us. And all of our cities have festivals, and it's a really good time for people to get together, to celebrate something about the city, to intermingle and get to know other people, anyway, to create community. And this program, we're going to kind of look behind the scenes of what does it take to put a festival like this together. And I asked each of you to kind of think of a little introduction about your time in the city. And I'll, we'll start with Adrian and okay. introduce yourself to our audience. My name is Adrian. I have been a resident of Golden Valley for the last 14 years. And my involvement with the Golden Valley Pride Festival started when, on the second year, I was asked to help with the signage. Um, as a career, I do signs and displays for a living. And so when the Golden Valley Pride Festival uh, was on its second year and it was going to grow into a larger venue of sorts, a festival, they wanted more signs. So I started doing more signs um, with the Golden Valley Pride Festival and that's kind of where I started with it. Ah. Again into year three right. and then now into year four and now with that became a bigger, broader sense sure. of the festival itself to use myself as a voice for the festival more than just signage right. but to actually get out and engage with the people right and and the whole festival is run by volunteers right yes we are all volunteer based okay. and Joni well first before I get started I'd really like to thank you okay. uh, from the committee of the Golden Valley Pride Festival to have us here tonight and kind of put thank out you. our message right. and what we have to offer but I'm Joni Claussen, and I'm also from Golden Valley. My parents moved to Golden Valley when I was a year old, so I've been there almost as uh, long as the farmers, but uh, I grew up there. And currently, I'm on the Golden Valley City Council and involved in many activities, liaison to different commissions. I'm also a, a board and commission member oh. here at uh, CCX Media. I love Golden Valley when this opportunity with the uh, uh, Golden Valley Pride Festival came, I jumped right on mm -hmm. to celebrate the diversity that we have in our city. Right. It's been awesome. I've been there since the very beginning. Uh -huh. There's three of us members here from the first, what they call the steering committee back right. in that day. And it's been an honor. It's been uh, educational and it's been very, very rewarding. Mm -hmm. okay. And now, can you tell us why you got involved originally? Actually, to have more people power is uh -huh. definitely important. When you have a volunteer committee, it takes just the right amount of people right. firing in all the avenues of, of what they're good at right. to make all the things happen. And so you need all those moving parts, you need all those moving people to help keep it going. That's number one. Number two, uh -huh. like Joni said, the movement itself celebrating diversity and that was a cause that was very good. Uh, I didn't say before but I was also on I am on the Golden Valley Community Foundation oh, yeah. and now West St. Paul wants to get me on board as well as Bloomington uh -huh. so all these cities are really starting to spark right. because of this they're seeing what we're doing here in Golden kind Valley cool. as the little sibling to yeah. the Twin Cities Pride Festival so it's really igniting a really great message across oh, all the cool. cities. Well, what about you Joni? Well, it started out with our founding father, I call Peter Knabley, okay. putting an email out on Facebook to see how the interest would, you know, if you right. get any interest. And I signed up immediately uh -huh. to be part of it. And it just kind of grew from there. Mm -hmm. I just uh, was really excited about it. And we just took um, steps from the very good, little by little right. until uh, we got enough members to get it started and really after 
Uh, the first year we had it, we started in January, but right. I got involved because I just thought this would be a great event for our community. Right. And Golden Valley has the highest number of per capita gay couples than any other city in yes. Minnesota. So this was kind of a natural for yeah, our... A good fit. Yeah, it was a good fit for our community. What do you see as the wider benefits to Golden Valley by doing this? Well, I think the biggest thing that I've noticed through our festivals that uh -huh. we've had, our people have come up and said, I view Golden Valley so different now. Uh -huh. mm. And that we've had a little history with the black community mm -hmm. and it has not all been positive. And so they kind of put us in a category, but they've come up and say, boy, Golden Valley really is awesome uh -huh. because we have gone forward with this and uh -huh. I will now view Golden Valley totally different. Uh -huh. And that, that's pretty big. Oh, you know? right, right. I think the, the, the biggest thing is that we're one of the larger suburbs in the greater uh -huh. Metro Twin Cities area that's one of the first to do this outside right. of the Twin Cities right. Festival. And that, like I was saying, is going to then trickle effect down to the rest. Right. Like I want to see other major larger cities doing the same thing, having their own version right. of a Pride Festival so then their communities can get together as well. And then showing acceptance. Exactly. Right. Yep. That's what it's about. Excuse me. That we've added. We have really nice beer mugs. And, ah. uh, so we started selling merchandise as well. Oh. <laughs> And different ideas occur as you move along, I bet. Right. Well, yeah, and, and we always talk about new things all uh -huh. the time. And then as we go through our meetings, as we build up, <coughs> what can we do? Right. What will we say for another What's time? What's possible? Yeah, <laughs> like we're like writing down ideas all the time, like, and we can do this and this. Now what's going to be the uh, Perfect lead-in, because right. the next thing I have got is about it's run by volunteers. Right. So Absolutely. I thought we'd talk about, first, how many volunteers would you estimate that you need to run the festival at this point in time. Yes, at this point we are at, I, said, I think I said 13, I think it might be 15. Ah. So let's just say an average of 15. 15? 12 to 15 is a very fair That number. is for your organizing. For your organizing, but, but also you got, you've got volunteers 50. too, right? For the yes. volunteers, yeah, we have an average During of 50 day, volunteers see, that we need. People have an opportunity of doing, being involved in yes, many right. parts of the process right. or just come one day for a certain number of hours. Right. right, yep. So what we do actually in that, in that avenue, the, the same people that help us with the stage and the uh -huh. music festival, <clears throat> the music portion of it, they also have a side thing where they set up a, a website that people can ah. go to and sign up to volunteer. Uh -huh. So we put that on our Facebook page. We share that with any of the community and the corporate organizations that are sponsors uh -huh. and donors so they can share with their employees. And we actually encourage them if their employees are going to sign up because what some companies do is they'll say, you'll get paid hours uh -huh. to go oh, right, right, be a right, part of yeah, a festival right. that we're going to support. Right. And then so if it happens to be, uh, in this case, Room and Board is one of our sponsors this right. year, um, and their employees go and do that, they can wear their own Room and Board shirts. So then the company gets to advertise themselves right. while they're there supporting the festival right. as it's happening. Kind of a good all the way around. <laughs> right. And so then on this on on that link it has listed out all the things that we need, like mm -hmm. people to help with the kids uh -huh. activities. Uh, we actually have people that operate the selling of the tickets, uh -huh. um, mer working the merchandise booth, uh, manning the parking areas because you have to keep traffic because right. people will still try to come in even though they're not oh, supposed right. to. There's cleanup, which is fun because then it's over and we all kind of ah, have a fun right, time. And so right. there's a lot of places where we need volunteer work. Running the children's areas yep. and one thing about the members of the committee, uh -huh. we kind of divide up uh, what we are going to be. Adrian's really co-chair this week uh, or this year. I'm ahead of I like that this week. And Just this week. <laughs> last week I wasn't even there. I was absent. There was no Adrian last week. Actually <laughs> this year. Okay. Uh, and um, I'm ahead of decorations. Mm -hmm. yep and um, all of these, <coughs> the oh, merchandise, right, right. Yeah, because merchandise. I have that business, sure. and I just, I order these, but they, I give them everything at cost so ah. we can be successful. Right, yeah. right. And, um, but everybody's assigned, okay. like, you're gonna do the children's, you're gonna do the church, you're gonna yeah. um, work on beer and wine. Well, so let's, we let's all say it, so Claire, Claire, Claire does the, the kids. You kind of break everything ceremony. up. Right. 
we're the 13 of you on yeah, the group. Yeah, we sit round table uh, and say who's right, doing what. Right. And then once you get that task, then that becomes yours. Okay. And you own it and you really got to focus on it. And then that way, you know, you don't have five people saying, what are we going to do about the parking this uh, year? You yeah. have that one person who's in Figuring charge of that. Out. And then he'll let the group know what's going right. on. And if they have an issue and they say, hey, you guys, I need some help over here, bring the question to the team and then we can like sound, oh, right, sound bar right. it all together. And then how do you get the people that come and just help for the day? The, the, through the businesses. Through right? the businesses, yes. So then they all they all get together and they meet and they're assigned what their task is. Right. So they so they sign up and they say, I want to be in charge of helping with the kids' activities. So when they arrive, they actually go to our booth and, and there's somebody who is there organizing them and saying, Okay, and they have their names, they have the list of all the people that showed up, so it's like a checklist like like going to work. Right. And they know that Jane and Richard said they were gonna do the kids booth between eleven right. and one, so then they send them over there and so that's how so that they works. can also go to the website and sign up. Okay, I was gonna as say well. You probably don't get all of them from the business, right? Correct. No, yeah. So there's a and link so that's then, on our Facebook and our okay. website where people can click and say, I want to be a And volunteer. you get enough in, do, by that kind of outreach? Uh, that just in this, this last time, we were only up to like 20, 30, up to a week ago. Ah. Now there's only six empty spots. So uh -huh. all filled in in the last Wait. week. We were really like, what oh. are we going to do? <laughs> we're all going to be running around yeah. being crazy, but it really it, it's it works working. itself out. Yeah. People want to get involved. Like I had a neighbor that said, I signed up last winter, but she goes, I don't know what I'm doing. So I told <laughs> her, go back on the website, uh -huh. sign up for what you want to yeah. do. Sure, yeah. sure. And um, so we get a lot of uh, community members that sign up to help uh, yeah. as well. And for me, our city attorney is going to help me with putting up all the decorations. Uh -huh. And so just word of mouth. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, all of us are there. And we kind of talk to things. people, right? Yes, yes. and uh, I'm the, all my stuff is done right away in the morning right. and till cleanup. I stay for uh -huh. cleanup, but then I can move around and help if there's oh, a place right, that right. needs help. Right. Or when the city of Golden Valley comes and our every year our uh, city manager comes and mans the booth well he wants to go out and mingle get it. Yep. and yeah. so right. Right. i yep. will man our our city booth so that they can go and enjoy sure. the festival sure. at all but all of us are busy now oh, is there yeah. another way to say when you're operating something you're manning it you can say oh, you're, you're woman right. it, or you're manning it or you're <laughs> operating it Let's, let's non-gender uh -huh, that expression. I right, don't even know. Right. I was actually thinking of it. That slips out of my mouth all the time. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Right. I try to. <laughs> I know. But I sometimes you say something, oh, it's what did I just say? It's just a catchphrase. It <laughs> right. slips out so easy. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like you say you're the founding father if you're a guy, but if you're a woman, are you the founding mother or are you a founding <laughs> It's going to be the reality of it all. Now, how did you publicize, especially the first festival, to get people to come? Well, we made up some little flyers uh -huh. and ran them in and out of every business that would do. Uh -huh. We had no signs that year. We did get some uh, canvas signs uh -huh. and put up by the park and at different places. And um, we kind of did it word of mouth and Facebook. And no, I, I see <laughs> that the Sun Post had an article. Yeah, that's that's the other thing too. So it's social media, right? Facebook, and then the newspaper ads, uh -huh. and then now we actually take the flyers and we go out and we put them all over oh, the yeah. retail shops. So we put these everywhere, and then word of mouth too. A lot uh -huh. of people know, and, and it certainly works. Yeah, it does, <laughs> and we've been engaging in other cities as well too. Uh -huh. So I know like. Um, the city of Medicine Lake lets us put signage up there. Oh, sure. We have some down in Edina as well because one of the things that we do, we track on our website is a questionnaire to all the people that come and uh -huh. all the people that donate. And so we get feedback from where oh, people come that's from. that's good. And we have people come from all over the state. Mm -hmm. all in four years, they're coming from all over ah, the state. So it's pretty awesome. Right, it is. Yeah. And we have a lot of great businesses within Golden Valley that are very supportive. And they've done things within, um, like Byerly's. They are a great sponsor. So they've done pride cookies and decorated. Oh, and kind of celebrated store. along with and, you. Uh, so that's really increased since the first year as well. Yeah. It really helps to be successful. Oh, right. Because <laughs> success 
breed success. Did you hear that, everybody? Yeah. It helps to be successful. You be yeah. successful, and then it'll help. Yeah. Yeah. Easier yeah. said than said. It is, but <laughs> if we hadn't succeeded that first year, there may not have been a second. There might not have a been second a second. Try. Right. 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 But we had 2,500 people yeah. the first year, yeah. and you know we're only a city of 20,000. Yeah. So that was pretty impressive. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't think so. Well, it's a movement that people can stand by too. Right. I mean, it's something that people believe in. Right. And they have fun. Yep. Now, you know, a lot has changed over the four years. When okay. we first started out, we had a church service that was right oh, at yeah. there you go. Um, oh. right at the park, and it was the first thing of the morning. And then we started the festival after. Well, the second year we were going to do the same <clears throat> thing, but it rained, uh. so we had to move it to Spirit of Hope Church, which we have done since. Uh -huh. And so that we started with that, but. Being on the committee from the beginning, we all brainstormed. What do we need? What would right, engage right. people? So we thought of booths, uh -huh. you know, but we didn't go to selling booths. We went to community booths. Uh -huh. And we had about, you know, 40 of those uh -huh. the first year. And then music. Everybody uh -huh. wants music. And so our stage was kind of right where we had the church service. Uh -huh. And the church service did involve uh, four of Golden Valley churches, uh -huh. and they did all the work on right. that. So, um, but then we took, what do we want the kids to do? And they made bracelets. Um, they had some different activities, paint facing, yeah. that maybe we're not doing this year, we're trying to change it up oh, a little sure. bit. Sure. And we've had the uh, bouncy houses for them. Uh -huh. And um, we did not have beer or wine the first year. Uh -huh. Uh, we wanted to start small and have room to grow oh, because right. we had no money the first year. <laughs> and um, But toward the end, it started to come in. Mm -hmm. And raising that money is not that easy oh, right. when you haven't had the success. Right. But after we started to have the success, uh -huh. then people, oh, I want to be part of that. But our first year, was very different. The second year, we wanted to grow a little bit, sure. and we added some new things, and we added merchandise. Uh -huh. And the first year, I thought we needed shirts. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, this is I ordered Golden Valley Pride 50 Festival of them shirts. Yep. because I told them my company would pay for those because uh -huh. we had no money. Sure. But then they ended up paying me back. Uh -huh. And then the next year, we kind of had ordered some shirts that I got on sale. And then the third year, we went to a different color. Uh -huh. So we've really tried to stay within our budget. Right, right. And uh, it it's cost us about $33,000 oh, last yeah. year to put yeah. this on. Yeah. And the first year, we didn't have that money. <laughs> but we wanted to grow. Oh, right. And you, had to, you have to start somewhere, right? Yes, absolutely. And we have changed some of the venue. One year we had, a, two years ago, we had a stage that got rained out and yep. flooded. And so we had to uh, make different right, plans. Right. Now we're, we have a stage again, but we're moving it away <laughs> from the flooding area. Yes. And so we've learned and, uh, and growing. And it just occurred to me, we didn't tell people where your festival is held in Golden Valley. Brookview okay. Park. It's on uh, 55 in Winnetka. Uh -huh. And we, um, we're offering, uh, we have uh, transportation from Spirit of Hope Church. Yep, yeah, Spirit shuttle, Hope, shuttle bus. Shuttle Over bus to there. So that people can park and get to uh, our area because they will close off the roads. Our police today are a little concerned about security. Oh, I bet. And that has changed over the years oh, as bet. well, yeah. from the first year to the second and right. third, and now the fourth. So they can't ride, drive right through. They have to park and then walk in. Uh -huh. But um, we've got balloon arches that we didn't have the yeah. first year, and it's it's... It's exciting. Oh, it's right. growing every it's, year. Right. It's getting that's more and more a, yeah. colorful and more and, and more engaging. And it's festive. It's very right. festive. It is a celebration, right? It is. And what she was saying, too, is as, as we continue to progress, the more and more people get involved, the uh -huh. more sponsors we get, the more oh, donors right. that we get, right. the more 
actual funding that we uh -huh. get, the more we get to do with it. Oh, of course. Because as volunteers, all we do is do all this stuff for these donations just right. to put it right back into it to yeah. make it a bigger, better, more fun, more engaging festival. These are a couple of our things that um, the second year and new this year uh -huh. that we've added. We have really nice beer mugs, and ah. uh, so we started selling merchandise as well. Oh, <laughs> and the different ideas occur as you move along, I bet. Right. Well, yeah, and, and we always talk about new things all oh. the time, and then as we go through our meetings, as we build up, <coughs> what can we do? Right. What will we say for another What's time? What's possible? Yeah, <laughs> like we're like writing down ideas all the time, like, and we can do this and this. And then I thought we should touch, and you have it up to a certain <coughs> point on that, the funding for it, yep. and you talked about the businesses, but let me get down. You have people give donations, and you've got, you're approaching people, but they can donate in different categories, Absolutely. right? Maybe you can tell about the different categories. So what people can do, they can donate any amount that they want. Right. And anybody that, as far as individual donors go, the minute they hit a $500 point, uh -huh they're considered a rainbow sponsor. Okay. And that's just an accolade that we give them where we make sure they're honored right. and, and, and noted. And some people do it and they actually have the option to stay uh, anonymous. Oh, right. Some people don't want to be known. They just want to yeah. they want to support the organization and they don't want their name out there. So for individual donations, that's how we do it. You just you give a donation and that's what it is. But then it's, if you exceed 500, because that is actually a okay. magic number that people have done. Oh, right. So because it happened, it became a thing, we knew that that was a, a, right. a threshold right. where we should really acknowledge that. Um, should I go on to? Oh, oh yeah, go on to the okay. others. So then there's community groups and nonprofits, and they fall into the $100, $200 category. So if you're a nonprofit organization, we want you there. Right. So we're going to give you the lowest amount where you're renting that space for you to have your tent, uh -huh. which is $100. If you're just a community group and you want no notoriety, uh -huh. then your cost is $200. Uh -huh. After that, you get into a bronze level, silver level, gold level, platinum level, and then as those go up, you get more notoriety. Uh -huh. So then you get your your uh, logo on the Facebook page, on uh -huh. our website, as listed sponsors, you end up being on our signage, and then you can get your logo on certain areas where like sponsoring of the beer and wine garden, right. sponsors of the stage, and then the platinum, the highest one, would be the sponsor of the entire festival uh -huh. itself. So when that happens, we haven't had a platinum sponsor yet, we just created that one this year. Uh -huh. If somebody does it, they will be uh -huh. noted, I know, right? right? They right. will be noted as like the actual sponsor mm -hmm that put on the festival for that year. And their logo will be all over the place. Uh -huh. And we wouldn't look at that, like we don't look at it like, oh, you're gonna sell out to the dollar. No, that's not what oh. we're doing. What we're saying is this company is showing the whole community how right. much they're supporting right. this right. festival. Definitely. And so because of that, they're gonna get their name everywhere yeah. as a big thank you from right. the festival, from the right. community, because it takes the dollars oh, to run. Oh yeah, you can't do it without yeah, that. Yeah, it really does. Now, that is one of the hardest jobs is the fundraising. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. And for me, because I'm on the council, I will not do it because it's just a conflict of interest. Yep. But like Adrian, last year he really came through. It and always is toward the end. We're a little leery oh. about spending yep. because everybody gives toward the end. Right. But right. we've been very fortunate to not only get enough donations to cover our yearly expenses, uh -huh to have some in the bank for the, for the following. following. Ah, yeah, that's one of the biggest things. Yeah, that's things. a good plus. And, yes. and that takes off a lot of pressure, but that is a big job. We've even looked in the past to hire someone to do fundraising for us, but the cost is never... Uh, it's been prohibitive. Yeah, right, right. So yes, even yeah. though she gave me that accolade, and I thank yeah. you for that. Uh, but there you was, did. Well, thank you. And you there were, good. there were, but even other people in our, in our organization, other committee members, it just takes someone to know someone to pick up the phone or to send the email. Right, right. And that's all it takes because a lot of organizations are so busy in their own day-to-day -day lives. Right. They don't know when the Golden Valley Pride Festival is. And right. then you have to get them months ahead of time right. to get them to sign up because they also have their company policies. Oh, right. So they They're have a timeline that they have to things, stay into. Right. So you just, that's the, the, the getting the financial financial funding for it is one of the, the sponsorship and the donations is one of the biggest things to make sure that it moves forward. Right. But in the end, we've always agreed that if we didn't have any funding, we'll still have food trucks and we'll have some balloons. Oh, yeah, and the people can still right. come to the park on that right. day. So right. we also right. know that it's You've not... You've got a plan B if you have to. Always a plan right. B. Well, just like I said, the success 
breed success, so we've been able to get some great sponsors oh, right. that we weren't able to get the first year because they're like, who are you? Right, what are you? Right. Doing? Not, you know? And I have the little and, history. The bigger uh, we get, the more other right, people are like, right, oh, well, right. maybe we do want to sponsor them. Yeah. Maybe we do want our name over there. Yeah, because like I went to Wells Fargo the first year to see if they would put a sign up in the bank yeah. and go by. Oh, no, they wouldn't do it because we do company the... Company policy. We, yeah, company policy. Uh, yeah. And That's understandable. We support uh, Twin Cities Pride, right. which, uh -huh. you know, right. now with the more success, <clears throat> you know, it's been, it's been easier. Uh, uh -huh. And with company policies as well, fundraising's been hard because by the time we're getting to it, they've already divvied out their money for, right. for right. the year. Right. And we start in the fall okay. before, and we meet like once a month. Now, then we might meet two, uh, twice, and now we've been meeting every, every week. week. Yeah. yeah, But you right know, we're end. not going out this every week yeah. all year. So right. uh, we've missed some because mm -hmm. they've already divvied their money out. But that's their company's policies, and that's how they do it. But and like you said, we'll just keep getting more success with our place, and then more people yeah, will want right, to be part of it. Right. So part part of your funding is individual committee members reaching out to the businesses. That's correct. Now I know that on your website there's a place for individuals to yes, make I donations, and up. and that's facilitated by the greater the mighty cause. Yeah. Or what, or, what no, no, the Community Foundation. The Golden Valley Community Foundation. Yeah. Do they host the website? No. Um, but there, our, th there was some our, information about them, and I wondered. Well, they if, on, on the Golden Valley Community Foundation, uh -huh. they have a link to every one of the other festivals that okay. happen, and so we're on their oh, organization. Okay. So people can go to the Golden Valley Community Foundation okay. website and see how to go and be. Oh, how to do how it. to do right. it from Pride, as well as on the Pride website. But then you've set up your individual website correct. so that we people can make donations on your website. That is correct. Right. And but the foundation, all checks go through the foundation. Correct. Yeah, that's what I thought. They, yeah. It sounded like they facilitated. Yeah. They, do. they facilitate yeah. the entire banking okay. and the, uh, the yeah. insurance, insurance and the nonprofit status. Yeah, that would so be an important part. Right. umbrella under the Golden Valley Community and Foundation. And we set that up a few years ago when I was on the council to you know, kind of facilitate having a main base for all the activities that go. And it's taken a few years to get this ah. to go, but um, they have a board, all the money goes to them. They then pay out, they keep all our money. Ah. And so we don't do that. That's helpful. Yes, it is. and they, uh, it's, that's also built through the uh -huh. years, kind right. of like this festival. Right, right, right. 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 Well, I want to thank both of you so much. Thank you very much, for Benita. It's been an honor lots, to be here. Lots of information and enthusiasm yes, indeed. about the process. And I was very happy when you were going to come on because we haven't done anything like this program. We've talked about farmers markets, but this is a whole different thing, right? But to encourage people in the other cities, too, that if you've got an idea that you'd like to celebrate for your city, take all these ideas and try. West St. Paul is going on, Bloomington is uh -huh. going on. I'm sure there's going to be more right, following. Right. But we are really considered the first suburb right. in yep. Minnesota to have a gay pride celebration. Yeah. And thank you for letting us, you know, come here and celebrate this with okay. you yes. and the communities. And uh, that's how they get to know about us. And thank you for having us. We really appreciate it. You're yeah, welcome. Thank you very much. We are glad you've been with us and come back next week. Thank you. Mm -hmm.